Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinenry.com slash podcast. Get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today, we welcome back Farhan Imran. He's a hematology oncology physician. His Kevin MD article titled, Is Elon Musk Right About the Future of Medicine? Farhan, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Kevin. Always good to be back on your show. So Farhan has been on multiple times. Go to kevinmd.com slash podcast. Get an upper right hand corner. There's a search icon. You can search for his prior episodes and hear his story. But today, let's jump right into your article about Elon Musk. Tell us, how did this article come together? So Kevin, this came together, actually, the reference to Elon Musk comes in a little bit later in the article, but the story started one day I walked into work and a colleague of mine had forgotten to bring her laptop. And I just being a nice guy offered her my laptop to work, but that would mean that I would have a computer to work on in the work area, but not in the patient room. So it was after a very long time that I ended up seeing a patient without having a computer in the room. So that was actually very profound because multiple things happened. First of all, I understood how important technology and the computer has become in the practice of medicine. You can get by without a stethoscope or a tuning fork, but you cannot get by without a a computer. So that led to a number of thoughts, which I have elaborated in the article, and there are several pieces of it. But if I turn it into two broad categories, one of the things is that in this day of artificial intelligence and chat GPT, which is a hot topic nowadays, we don't know how the world is going to change, which is changing so rapidly right in front of our own eyes. How will medicine change? Hmm. And I know there are a lot of criticisms of the EMR and the computer systems and everything, but I am not looking at what it is doing to medicine now. I'm looking at what medicine would look like, let's say, in four to 500 years from now. So you zoom out and you go four to 500 years back where there were no antibiotics or Hmm. vaccines. And now you zoom uh, four to 500 years forward. So what would be some of the benefits and some of the downsides of doing that? So that is an overall encompassing of this article. But going into the a futuristic model, I know this sounds like sci-fi, but just imagining that the, the job that I do, the job of an oncologist from taking the history to the physical exam, to the pathology and to the radiology and the treatment options. So imagine in a few hundred years from now, the doctors lose their jobs, which we think that our job cannot be taken over by the computers. But you walk into some sort of a booth and you say your symptoms and just like Siri and Alexa hear what you're saying and they are already have the algorithms to ask you the follow up questions. And then uh, instead of a physical exam from your head to toe, you have an absolute anatomical detail of all the normal and abnormal things that are going on. And the computer, there's already studies coming out that the computer is AI is getting better than radiologists to read it. And then they take you, you have one drop of blood that is analyzed and all the tests known to us are done in one single panel, like the computer does. And then all that information is plugged in into the algorithm and you get a diagnosis and a stage and the most accurate treatments where when it is injected into your body and without the need of a human, it just it just treats it. So a lot of us, when we're having discussions, many people don't believe in that. And I am also just thinking out loud here that our jobs can never be taken over by the computer, but it looks like maybe in a few hundred years, that's where we're headed. So let's talk about in the next, say, six to 12 months, rather than a few hundred years. And like you mentioned, ChatGPT, and it's only been less than a year since it was introduced, and it's made seismic changes just within medicine itself. How about your world of hematology oncology? How has AI impacted you personally in the exam room? And what do you envision the next, say, immediate future, six, 12 months to bring? 
Well, the thing is that right now, I don't think that there's any direct impact in the patient room or our functionings as of yet, but I think everybody is taking it with some level of confusion. Let me give you an example. If you look at the Writers Guild and all the people who are creative and who are going through these protests and the creators of artificial intelligence are saying to put a stop or some regulation on it, so for writers who are who are creative people, so for them, it has already impacted them a lot. For scientists, for us as scientists and clinicians, it has not directly impacted, but everybody can feel it that it is coming. Hmm. So for example, the example, yesterday I was reading that somebody has done a study where they have put in all these algorithms of you know how a tumor is removed and it is instantly reviewed by a pathologist, something, something called a frozen section, from which it tells the surgeon whether to proceed with the surgery or not. So that they're now having AI do it and AI is doing it better than a pathologist. Mm. So if I'm a pathologist, let's say, and if I if it has taken me 15 years of training to reach that expertise, and now a computer comes and tells me that I can do it in five seconds and it's more accurate than yours, then how I would feel. <laughs> and if you compare it with the past, so for example, when the calculator was not yet invented, and if you tell someone, well, why don't you multiply 68,966 by 78,000, you uh, will not do it by yourself. You will say, let let me have a calculator do it. It will do it more accurately. So basically, there's this shadow looming in, in the exam room and in our conferences that, hey, at what point the job that I'm doing is going to be taken over by the computer? Now, yeah. what exactly did Elon Musk say about artificial intelligence and what can you extrapolate from what he said as it relates to medicine? So Elon Musk did not say directly towards medicine, but I did hear him in one talk saying that, mark my words, artificial intelligence is more dangerous than the nukes. So these are some of the biggest minds in the world right now, and they are worried what artificial intelligence can do. So taking that into context to medicine, so the later part of my article goes into, fine, you have a technology which is now giving you much more accurate care compared to humans, mm -hmm. but what if that technology starts making decisions for you? What if that technology starts choosing when to give you medicine, when not to give you medicine? What if that technology starts saying that this life is not worth living? this person is too old to be given these treatments, this person is a, a drug pain seeker versus they have real pain. Mm -hmm. So what if the artificial intelligence starts making those decisions? And if they do that, then are we as humans prepared in medicine? What are the stop gaps and what are the measures that we are going to have to take to put an end to that? So we joke around uh, and say, remember that movie, uh, Back to the Future? Yeah. And everything that happened in Back to the Future became true within our lifetime. Nobody expected that that would happen, but it became true. So now who says that the Terminator will not come true and these uh, cyborgs or these artificial beings who are so smart will not start making decisions for us? And then some may argue, well, aren't there some humans that are doing the same to humans? Political-wise, you know, there's so much controversy going on about issues like abortion, mm -hmm. or gender identity issues. So if humans can put restrictions on humans based on those complex medical issues, with, whether how would humans face it when artificial intelligence will start making these decisions for us so so what about in your world of oncology or just with your physician colleagues are they discussing these ethical considerations of ai yet no because i feel that nobody thinks that it is to that extent i still when i have these discussions with my colleagues and i'm pretty sure as your listeners on the podcast mm 
many of them are at a point where they'll brush it away and they'll say, oh, this is all sci-fi. This is, doesn't even make sense. We don't know how this will turn out. And I think that whenever I say amongst my colleagues that, hey, our jobs are going to be taken over, I get a lot of folks saying, I don't think that that can happen. And I don't think it's going to do that. People say artificial intelligence cannot give you sympathy, empathy, and things like that. But you know what? You never know where this thing goes. So so how can physicians stay relevant in your scenario where you envisioned healthcare in three to 400 years, I didn't see physicians continue to play a role because AI has gotten to a point where it pretty much does everything that we can do already. So as AI rapidly evolves, what are some things that we physicians can do to stay relevant going forward? Well, first of all, I think that we should, instead of opposing it, we should embrace it. And if it is leading to improved healthcare, then we would all love it. Hey, if I lose my job as an oncologist because a computer is doing a much better role, so fine, it's bad for me, but it's better for the hundreds and thousands of patients I see. So that much we should be more humbled by, okay, what these are doing. But like other industries, how they are sitting together and whatever AI technologies are happening in medicine, we should already start working on the laws of it and the ethics of it, perhaps bring that as a chapter or as a topic, as a course in medical education, bring that into our ethics rounds, bring more cases. And right now we're not seeing as many cases because it has not infiltrated medicine as much. But you're going to start seeing very soon with the pace that it's going within the next few years that, okay, well, we have this, I can envision in the radiology conference that, hey, MRIs, the computer is doing a better job, so we don't need this person, so what should we do? So we should, I mean, we cannot play out too many unknown scenarios in our, in our mind, but at least we can be prepared to deal with it as it comes and don't let it go beyond our, our reach and our approach. Now, what are you seeing among physician trainees and medical students? Because I'm sure they're incorporating things like ChatGBT into rounds and into their their learning. So are you introducing these concepts during your own teaching rounds when you encounter medical trainees and in medical education and how to use and embrace AI responsibly? Yes. So we in our department are having a big debate about this. So for example, a student comes and they have already reviewed all the information about the patient. They have already maybe put into jet GPT and come up with the right treatment algorithms and everything without even seeing the patient. They have just gotten all the data and put it in. So that is where we are trying to bring out the human side of medicine. So I've made this rule that at the beginning of a rotation, I tell my students that I will, at the end of the week, grade you on the amount of time that you have spent with the patient, not just the treatment options that you have come up with. I have told them that if you can tell me one thing about the patient that is not yet documented in your EMR, and if you can tell me, and I will grade you on how many personal connections, it's not enough to know that the patient is a carpenter. I need you to know where they work, how many kids they have, what have they made, and make some sort of a personal connection. So as much as the artificial, I mean, if I can't ask my student not to look things up. If they're looking it up and they're coming up to the right answer medically, I'm happy. But on the other hand, the more they are losing that personal connection. So we are trying to work on that to bring that as much as possible. We're talking to Farhan Imran. He's a hematology oncology physician. Today's Kevin MD article is titled, Is Elon Musk Right About the Future of Medicine? Farhan, tell us some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience. I just want to say, Kevin, that we are living in very, very interesting times. And we are living in the digital revolution where our generation is the generation which is seeing the change. The When we were kids, we were using cassettes and VCRs. Mm-hmm. And now you see that Las Vegas uh, dome that they built yep. such an excellence. So although 
innovation, we should embrace it. We should not really come in the way of the progress of the good side of artificial intelligence. But on the other hand, the onus is on us, the burden is on us to keep up with the human side of medicine. And basically, for, for, for centuries, since the beginning of times, this has been a very, very, very sacred profession. And there are emotions and tears and fears and those involved. So as the computer is taking over and they are improvising that care, we should bring out even more the humanistic and the art of medicine as much as we can, each one of us. Farhan, once again, thank you so much for sharing your time and perspective. And thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you.